Welcome back to Mock Draft Madness, day 38 of doing a mock draft every single day until the NFL draft. We have another special edition of a two-rounder. Me and Dobbs are going to be picking. I'm going to take odds. He is going to take evens. If you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Let us know in the comments your favorite and least favorite pick from this mock draft. Dobbs, I haven't talked to you about this, but I uh, said this yesterday in my video. I think as we get closer, maybe like three days out from the draft, something like that. I say we do one little three rounder just to end the mock draft madness. I think maybe we do that as the last one. I think that would be a fun idea. Oh, Um, it's only right, bro. We have to eventually. So like I said, Dobbs is going to be evens. I'm going to go odds. And, you know, just because we have switched on who is drafting number one for the bears, the player is not switching. Caleb Williams, I don't think this really requires much discussion. He only took one thirty visit. As a Bears fan, I couldn't be more ecstatic. I, I was just like, here's what I will say because I don't. Whenever I do the mock drafts and I do Caleb here, I have I haven't traded the pick or drafted someone different in probably about twenty days. I there is some level of comfort as a Bears fan knowing that even if Caleb is a bust. Your organization didn't overthink the pick. Like the Bears no, have yeah. tried to be smarter than everybody else for so long and it has failed them miserably. It's almost like, okay, you have a front office that is like, okay, you have the number one pick. Mind you, the Bears have only had the number one pick twice in franchise history. And I don't, I think the last one was 1957. They have never taken a quarterback number one overall. No, yeah, and there's no reason to overthink with Caleb again, bro. Yes, he's not the perfect prospect. He has certainly things to work on in the area of, like, footwork and just getting that right. We know he sometimes he doesn't take his first read, and we want to see him get better at that. But it's like at the end of the day, bro, in my opinion, he's about as near, not not as near, but about as near as of the traits you would want in a quarterback where you can mold them. He has all those. Like he's the perfect clay for, for you know for a franchise that desperately needs that clay. Like there's no other way to put it. It's yeah. like so anyone who's worried, anyone, don't worry about it, bro. You, you you're leaning much more. You're leaning much more on the the side of it going very well than him busting out. There's nothing to worry about. Well, it's also like the quarterbacks that get taken number one overall bust at a significantly less rate than quarterbacks taken after. And the thing is, just like. Dude, any of these guys can bust. Why would you not take a chance on the more surefire guy? And also, um, please ignore the decorations. There was a, a themed um, apartment crawl this weekend. So it says yeehaw in the back, and then there's horses right there. So Dobbs, number two, who are you taking with the Washington Commanders? You know, it's funny because I didn't even notice that, bro. But now that you pointed it out, yeehaw, theme of the yeehaw, month, bro. Yeehaw. Uh, Maybe that's so what we'll they, say like, when the, like, the Cowboys pick. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Tough situation here for the commanders because it's like, you know me, I'm not on the Drake May train, especially at number two overall. How I feel about Drake is still how I've always felt. When he, If he falls to a situation where he can sit for a year or two, best case scenario, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, as I feel like there's the best chance of this happening on draft night, you know, I did it, I did it last time I had a chance. I'm going to do it again, bro. You know, they're getting a call. Brrr, the phone's ringing. Brrr. And I think the only team that's going to want to do this that also has an opportunity to sit him for a year is the team who also has made it clear that they're really looking to get him. I think I was, I'm going to say, so we're going to call from the Vikings. Vikings said, we're going to give you, they are obviously the first rounder this year, are both our first rounders this year. What other compensation do you think is getting that done though, Hunter? Bro, for number two, I see, here's my thing. So I don't think... Washington is moving off. I really think the draft starts at three, but I'm willing to entertain the trade to two because it's something that we have to look at because I think Minnesota has probably called everybody in the top 10, probably everybody looking to move up because the reality is because I, I, I played out this scenario the other day, right? So Maurice Jones drew actually funny enough gave me inspiration for like a very quarterback heavy first round mock I did two days ago, I believe. And the reality is if the quarterbacks go four in the top five and the Vikings are not one or four in the top six and the Vikings are not one of those players, they are forced, forced to draft Penix or Knicks at 11 or move up. Because if you think about it, 
the Broncos and the Raiders are sitting right there and they can take those guys. And then Minnesota is left with um, Spencer Rattler. You know what I'm saying? Like they have to get a quarterback in the first round this year. And if they're not getting one of the top four guys, they are probably going to be forced to overdraft a Bo Nix and a Michael Penix because the reality is you have two quarterback need teams who understand that the Vikings are probably going to take one at 23 and then they're going to, and then the Broncos don't have a second round pick. The Raiders do. So it's like it, it people always want to talk about, well, the, the Vikings won't give up all this, but they have to realize if they're not, if they're not getting one of those top four quarterbacks, they're in a very, very, very tough situation. No, and that's why, again, and as I've said, you know, I don't think they just got that ammo for no reason. I think they made it very clear to everybody no. that they wanted that ammo to move up and get one of their guys. And I do truly believe that the guy that they're looking at most is Drake May. And I think that they're either, I think that the, what's the word I'm looking for here, bro? The uh, consolidation prize would be if J.J. McCarthy Consensus. Is, is, you know, yeah, like that'd be their second guy. So I'm going to force the no, hand. Like consolation is right. Like, I'm going to have him going I all in. Wrong. Okay. No, okay, okay. We can use either in this case, though. So, but yeah, we're going all in, bro. I'm going to say giving up the two first rounders, uh, third rounder, fourth rounder. Oh, and then my. what you're thinking? You, I feel like that's still... it has to be. It has to be. I mean, like, but that's the thing is, like, they don't even have they don't even have a second or a third this year. This is their whole draft. And that's the thing, though. I feel like the Vikings are also probably looking at it from a situation of like, we're in a solid window as long as we get, yeah. we need to keep the Jettas. But you know what I mean? It's like, you know what? Let's go all in. And and more than anything, on a guy where we feel like the ceiling is the highest. So that's my logic on this one. And again, I, like you said, I think the Vikings are going to be swinging for the fences. That's just how I view it. I don't think they got this capital for no reason. And again, I could be completely wrong. But in this case, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to have the Vikings shoot up here at number two. Okay, so I have a first this year. Or both first this year. A first next year. And then I'm thinking maybe... Bro, it's gotta it's gotta be like what? It's gotta be like a first and twenty six, right? Four first? I mean, I don't know. That sounds like a lot, but like to two. Yeah, uh, I feel like maybe we'll do we'll do we'll do three ones and a third next year. Okay, that's what I that that's perfect. We'll just I mean, obviously this isn't exact trade value, but um, well, yeah, we just we're, we're we're forcing the hand in the PFF simulator. We gotta do what we gotta do, you know. All right, so they're gonna take Drake May. Yet yeah, Drake at number two. All right. So because again, it's not I think the teams are still gonna think Drake's ceiling is really high. But at that same token, again to what Merrill Hodge said, if you like if you force him out right now and you make him play from day one, I do truly think he's the type of he will get you. He I I you know, Taco has said and I do think he would get someone fired. I don't know who it would be, but he he'd be getting someone fired. But you let him sit for a year or two. I do think that you're gonna touch on you definitely have a chance to touch on some really, really nice traits. I have an interesting play here that we'll get to uh after this pick that I think we can make someone very happy. All right. So with the Patriots, I'm actually going to go JJ McCarthy. Hey. I am going to mix it up a little bit. I think honestly, if you look at the, the Patriots, like, please tell me this, you know, where did, where did Tom Brady play? What he play, He played at Michigan. That, see, that is crazy. I never, I, I never thought about that at all. I, I mean, like, here's my thing: the fact that I, they, they did play at the same school. Like, I've never thought a, about the. He's a winner. He's won at the state level. He's won at the college level. He has an incredible record. He played for a great coach. And and obviously, I'm not saying that JJ McCarthy did this all himself, but he definitely has the leader intangibles. Do I love JJ McCarthy? No, I don't. I don't love him. I I personally would not do this. But I think if you look at the Patriots, J.J. McCarthy strikes me as more of a type of guy that they're going to go for over a Jane Daniels. I think, honestly, if Robert Kraft wasn't in the picture, they'd probably trade the pick. See, this is interesting, and I love it, bro, because you know me, though, like, again, I, I'm definitely still high on his upside. And if you, like I've been saying about this, kind of like about Drake May, same thing, but with J.J., 
Look, you can also sit him behind Jacoby this year. It's not like you're forced into a situation where you have to play him right away. Right. You can play this where it's like, we know we're not going to be competitive next year. Let's let's let JJ grow. Let's win as many games as we can, but still understand that if we lose a lot of games, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a good thing. We can build around JJ with future you know, first rounders. I think that's there's nothing wrong with that direction at all, actually. I, I love it. All right, number four to the Arizona Cardinals. Is it is it written in pen yet? Yeah, so I was going to say, if, if the draft goes this way, we know where we're going. I don't have to explain it very much to anybody. We're taking Marv off the board right here. You're getting your 6'4 unicorn receiver that has generational ability, potentially. And we don't have to think much about it. We just really don't have to think much about it. Again, not that I don't love Malik and Rome a lot, too, but we got to take Marv with that frame. There's just no, yeah, I can't slice it any other way. There's nothing really for me to talk about here, and I'm glad you did that because I think the scenario that I wanted to play out will play out now. So, what if the commanders are able to pull off this heist and they still are able to trade up with the Chargers and get Jaden Daniels? Hmm. That would be insanity. Because if you think about it, the Chargers are prime trade back candidates. They need more picks to rebuild this in their vision. And they're not going to be taking a quarterback. And one of the top quarterbacks is still available. So I'm going to call up the Los Angeles Chargers. Now knowing that I have 11, 23, 36, 40, 67, 78, and two first next year, a second next year, and two thirds. You have a ridiculous amount of capital. Whatever you need to get this deal done, you can get it, and you're still going to get maybe your quarterback a choice. So I think the four number five, maybe we give them pick 11 and then pick 36 this year. Yeah, Would that I be think, fair? I think, and then maybe I would probably be saying like, let me get pick 100 too. Pick 100? Okay. Yeah, let gotcha. me get that compensatory pick. All right, let's force that trade through. So now the commander's on the clock, and I am going to have them taking Jaden Daniels. See, I love that, bro. See, you get... Okay, so if you look at... If we take a look at the commanders now, they have pick 23, 40, 67, 78, and then two first next year, a second, and a third. They gained all that from moving back. Because... I, obviously, it's all going to depend on the info that these teams have when it comes to draft night, and it could all be smoke screens. But I don't think Washington could trade out, but this I could see a team moving out and then moving back up like the Cardinals did last year. Not for a quarterback. No, see, but. I love the, the way you played the board, bro. That was a master class. And Jaden Daniels going and were, again, I was thinking about taking number two, but you've got way better value here. Everybody's happy except maybe some Vikings fans. But you know what? Again, this I do like I'm just playing what I think the Vikings vision is at this point. Like, right. You know, it just depends on how you, on how you look at it. Like. At number hey, six, bro. who are we going with the hey, Giants? Say, pick six. You know, this makes things really interesting because, you know, I can obviously. I just it, the, 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 I just don't love my value here across the board, no matter what, like the Giants right now, this is tough. But then it's also a position where it's like, who's going to be trading up right here? You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. where that that's where then things get tough. The so Jets. it's like. They could. They definitely I don't, I don't could, see it happening. Like, I just don't think they would give up what the Giants would be looking for in return. And that's where. And again, like I always tell you, bro, you know, as much as I'd love to have Joe Alt. I'm not comfortable. I, I would, you know, I wouldn't want to take him and kick him out of his natural position and, and bank on that. It just seems like a recipe where him and Olu like, are guys that I would not move. Yeah. Like there are some guys where it's like, exactly. You are left tackle. That's how I feel about Joe Alt. It's just a tough position here at number six, bro. And um, man, oh man, it's just a tough position. But you know what? With that said, I'm going to switch things up a little bit here. Maybe, you know, make a pick where I don't think I've seen this really happen a lot. And I'm not a lot of mocks or anything, but I'm just talking logically here. Okay. You know, give me a reason why if, if I'm the Giants, I'm struggling. I'm not taking Talise Fuaka off the board right here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I mean, that's not a bad play um, because if you think about it, Evan Neal really hasn't worked out. And yeah, no, you that's can, been, that has been egregious over there. With the, you can play Fuanga or Evan Neal at guard or tackle. So they're kind of like interchangeable then. So, I was going to say, yeah, we're kind of going to give Evan Neal kind of like a second life here and try to kick him over. Even though with his frame, I think it'll be interesting to see how he would play like that. Yeah, I prefer that over another year of trying him out at the tackle and having it bust out. And then we're in a really, really rough situation in the trenches.
Yeah, because they have John Runyon, who they signed from the Packers um, at right guard now. But then you have Aaron Stinney, who is your left guard. He's 30 years old, so you're kind of going to probably look for some youth there. But it just gives you some more flexibility. You also signed Jermaine Eleanor, um, so he could play there. But maybe Evan Neal just becomes your swing guy. Well, that's the thing, too. I was going to say exactly. It's like, at the worst, we still have a, val- a place for him. Because, you, you know, teams, it's hard for your tackles to stay healthy all year, every snap. You know, having Evan Neal for at least rotation, it's not the end of the world. What I really want to say about this, too, bro, is I'm sure a lot of people are like, Talise Fuaga over Joe Alt. You know, how could that happen? Like, how it happened in my simulation mock yesterday. But I'm telling you guys, man, just crunch some Talise tape. Like, this, if you're, you know, if you're wondering, you know, this is a guy who, right, like, we say the ceiling Joe Alt and all that, the floor is higher. But like when you watch Talise, man, you understand that this is a guy who would come in potential future all pro type ceiling, much like Penai Sewell. And you watch him specifically versus the UCLA against UCLA. Watch that tape. We're talking like near flawless tape against one of the best prospects in this year's class, Laya Tulatu. Like you've seen him be able to go toe to toe with the best of the best in college. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, if he goes before Joel, I would not be that shocked, especially to a team that needs the right versus the left. Number seven to the Tennessee Titans. I think this one's kind of written in pen two. Oh, yeah, I I love the idea of Joe Alt going there, but with Malik neighbors on the board, do you consider it like I think you have to? I mean, as well, you definitely have to consider it. You know me, though, the way I build my team, you know, like how I always think about it. I'm definitely going Joe Alt. But again, if you went Malik, there's definitely nothing wrong with it, especially because we've seen how much the downfall has occurred since they got rid of A.J. Brown. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go Joe Alt. So. With the Falcons on the clock, I have a I have a proposal for you before you go. Oh, you know, I'm I'm here now with the proposal. With a Romo Dunze and Malik Neighbors sitting here still available, if you are the Buffalo Bills, are you considering it? Because I think I want to try. If you if you don't, I'm gonna try something interesting with my next pick. No, you're because you are the Bills, right? I'm uh no, I would be the Bills. Yeah, you're the Bills. You know what? Because I'm thinking I saw a trade today where it was the Bears traded back with the Bills and then picked up like a good amount of draft capital and still was able to take like Xavier Worthy later. But I just I don't know. I feel like if both of these guys are on the clock, I feel like Atlanta and Chicago are both getting a lot of calls. No, they definitely are. They definitely are getting a lot of calls. Let me just take a look here. Let me see something. Do you think, how highly do you think these, or how separated do you think these edges are? Because I see them going edge. See, I see them either going edge or, but at the same time, here's my thing. I'm going to say, hold on, give me a second here, because I, I think I might be cooking some. I think I might be cooking something here, bro. Yeah, you see, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna make a bit of a surprise pick here for you. Okay. I think I'm gonna ah, no, I, because they definitely do. They definitely have other needs. It's just it's tough, but their D line just needs help. See, but you know what? Nah, how about it? I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the trigger on it because I think I think there's actually a very solid chance we see this. We were just talking about it before we started recording, bro. He's gonna go higher than I think a lot of people. Oh. And I and and uh, you know and I. You can go a lot higher than I don't think a lot of people have him listed. If you're the Falcons, you definitely have a need in this position, not only because you're one of your stars in this position group is getting older, but also when you're just playing that base three, four, you still need another interior guy. So we're going to, we're going to swing the board here a little bit, you know, and maybe, maybe some Falcon fans are not happy with this now, but I promise you just watch him play. You'll, you'll like this in the future. You, if you get, and if he ends, ends up on your team, you're getting fantastic value right here. I don't care what anyone says. I'm going Jerzon Newton right here, bro. My logic is too, is just I don't think the Bills are going to want to trade up the value they're going to have to move up that much, especially because low-key, they're kind of starting to become, I don't want to say like, they're definitely not bare bones, but they have a lot of needs now. And it's like, if you're giving up draft capital when you have a lot of needs, I don't know. It just feels like a rough recipe. So with that said, bro, I'm going to just, I'm sticking to the board here, taking value where a lot of people might not get it right now. But you're signing Newton right here at pick eight. I'm comfortable with it, bro. And I love it for the Falcons. I mean, I could see them going defensive interior too. I think anything on the defensive line is reasonable at pick eight. I could also see them trading back, getting some capital, and taking one of the top defensive players because 
this is a very he offense heavy draft. So you're still going to be able to get one of the better guys, maybe around pick 15 to pick 20. Um, so at number nine, I just want to look at what a potential trade with the bills could be, because in my opinion, is Khalil Shakur like I like I think Shakur is a good player but my issue is he had a decent year last year but I I just don't I see him probably having a worse year being a wide receiver one similar to like what we saw with Juju Smith-Schuster like he excels when there is an alpha guy there you know no for sure and I don't Unless wanna, he, made, he might just jump this year but right and I think my thing is if they want a top receiver the issue is like, like the Bills are going to have to move up for one. Like, there's a very good chance that Adonai Mitchell and Brian Thomas Jr. are off the board before they even pick. So they're going to have to trade up, in my opinion. The issue is they have picked 28, pick 60, and they don't have another pick until 128. So another 68 picks later. So it's just tough because to move up to nine, I feel like it would have to be like a first round, a second rounder, and maybe something next year as well. No, for I feel like that's like at, at least. So it's like that's where it get, that's where it gets tough with the builds when you already have so many needs. Right. Yeah, I'll probably just stick and pick. I'm going to go Malik Neighbors to the Bears. Give him another See, I love that too, alpha though. receiver. Usually I mean like I have I would want Malik Neighbors over Romo Dunze just because I think the talent in Malik is a little bit higher, but I'd be okay with either. No, that's just a money pick to me, bro. That's just a money pick. At number 10, New York Jets. Oh, right, bro. Um, Give me a second here to think about this one, because there's definitely a few directions I'm thinking. Do you think in the in the actual draft, do you think if Romo Dunze is on the board and let's say Talisa Fuaga is on the board, who are they going to take? See that's, see, that's where things get tough, bro. Like, I feel like probably Talise, knowing, like, where you got to keep Rodgers healthy. I don't know, though. But and see, I'm thinking right now, like, with what I have right here, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I'm right now, I'm very much kind of between Byron Murphy, Troy Fatanu, mm. or Brock Bowers. Because I feel like that we could definitely go, right, there's that, like, it's kind of like three different, three separate routes. It's tough, bro. It really is tough. The Jets, I truly don't know what they are going to do. I personally think they should invest in a tackle because it's like after this year, Morgan Moses and Tyron Smith aren't going to be there. So you need yeah, a long-term answer. You know but what? at the same yeah, that, time, you, you have a two-year window. You know, you showed out my answer, though. And even on the off chance that one of them gets injured this year, you have a fantastic placement right here. He goes in a lot of the simulated mocks, and I love whenever he does because this is what I do think. Again, I love this value for the Jets. Let me get Troy Fatana right here at pick 10, bro. Makes so much sense for them, honestly. Them. No, for the way the Jets are built, like I said, I say this every time it happens, but that's definitely, I think, one of the money routes for them here at pick 10. He's a guy that has five position versatility, and it's like we know the Jets O-line is injured pretty often. So um, he's someone that can fill in wherever and compete with John Simpson for like the starting guard spot. No, absolutely, bro. That was what I was thinking, too. It's like if you want to play him a guard this year, you also definitely are going to have a chance to do that. So with the Chargers sitting here at 11 and Romo Dunze is on the board, that is an easy selection. They got rid of Keenan Allen. They got rid of Mike Williams. They need an alpha wide receiver one. So to move back and be able to get their guys and, um, you know, still get one of the top three receivers, I think is a win. No, yeah. Played, they, they played the board on that one for sure. That is no lie. Number 12 to the Denver Broncos. What are we doing? Oh, man, bro. This is one of those just shit picks, bro. Like, I don't... I it, hate it, picking for them. I hate it. It is... Bro, it's terrible. It is terrible, bro. Uh, I always try to find, depending on how the board falls, like, teams that want to move up because it's, like, lack of draft capital. They need a lot. And it's, like, is Brock Bowers going to change your team? He, and, he, and the thing is, Brock Bowers is BPA. So it's, like, you kind of... It's like you kind of got to take them, but it doesn't really work with them. Steve, it does what, work though? with Sean Payton and everything like that. But like in terms of a team building perspective. Yeah, no, nah, it's just it's tough, bro. But at the same time, dude, it's like I don't think anyone's going to be trading up. Like it's like, like I just I don't know like the way the board is right now. Like I don't know. 
Oh, bro, it's it's tough. <sighs> because it's like after the Bengals signed all those tight ends, I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, it's like I don't think that means they're like going to be desperate to trade up for Brock Bowers. It's like, and then any other team, I don't. Yeah, I'm just going to take Brock off the board right here, bro. I think we're going to say like Sean Payton. You know how Sean uses his tight ends in the slot. You can more... use them in a slot like a Michael Thomas. Yeah, for a lot of teams, taking Brock right here, I absolutely hate it. The Broncos are the one team where I know how Sean utilizes his tight ends. I don't think there's really much trade up value for a lot of other teams where it's like the Broncos would just be gaining such an edge where the other teams would be losing it. I just feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable taking Brock right there at 12. Just because like, if it wasn't a Sean Payton team, I would hate it. I don't hate it because it's a Sean Payton team. At number 13, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, honestly, guys, just give me Terry on Arnold. Like, I just, I, to me... I think I think Arnold is CB. Oh, hold on. I think my mic shifted out real quick. Yeah, there it goes. I think to me, Terry on Arnold is CB one A. I think Quinion Mitchell is CB one B, and maybe Cooper DeGene is CB one C. Like that's how I kind of have them. Um, obviously, Cooper DeGene has a little bit more versatility than these guys. Um, but I just think Terry on Arnold as a corner is probably the best prospect at that corner position in the draft. No, I agree with that completely, bro. Also, side note, you can you hear my cat wreaking havoc over there? No, no, you're good. You're good. Okay, perfect. Just want to make sure. Yeah, no, I think I'm with you on that. You know how I feel about Cooper, bro. At this point, I'm I'm Cooper safety one. So it's like right. yeah. At number 14 to the New Orleans Saints stops. What is your team doing? What are they doing? Bro, I was already I was already mulling over the board trying to think what we're gonna do. And it's like, man, it's just tough. But you know what, bro? It's not that tough for me because I love him. Give me Byron Murphy right here, bro. Give me Byron Murphy. Right? We got Chase Young in free agency. We already have Carl Granderson off the edge. If if Chase comes and produces, and then we add another guy to that interior to produce, all of a sudden, this D-line could be coming to life. I love Byron Murphy. So not too hard for me. So I've been doing a couple interesting things for the Colts. I, I don't want to say interesting, but I've been back and forth on corner wide receiver. I think they can get a guy in a Quinion Mitchell or a Cooper DeGene here, and I, I would probably lean more Quinion for them. But I also kind of like the idea of Brian Thomas Jr. here. Brian Thomas Jr., Michael Pittman, Josh Downs, Alec Pierce. Like, I think that is a good. And with Anthony Richardson's arm and Brian Thomas Jr., 433 speed, it is such a nice combo. So the issue I have with going wide receiver is their cornerback room is not good. It is not good. It's rough. It is uh let me put read it you nicely. These, yeah, let me read you these names, Dobbs. Um I like Kenny Moore, right? No, yeah. Well, they're talking about like that's a slot beast, but it's like you're not really we're not playing him on the outside. So you have Juju Brunts who you drafted last year. And then it is Dallas Flowers, Jalen Jones, Amir Speed, Chris Layman's. So I think you can go into this draft at pick 15 and really grab an alpha guy like a Quinion Mitchell if Terry and Arnold is not there, which I think he could be. Right. No, and that so are we going Quinion right here? Yeah, I'm going Quinion. See, I think I just, that's the smart play, though. I think wide receiver would be nice. I think it's a little bit more of a luxury, though, when you actually have a very bad need at corner and there are, like, very talented corners on the board. Now, if Quinion and... Tara and Arnold were gone, I would say probably go Brian Thomas or trade down for a corner. But at this spot, let's go Quinion Mitchell. Number 16 to the Seattle Seahawks. You know what I have to think about this one, bro? I always say whenever I'm an interior needy team and they it pops up on the mock, I don't think about it. Jackson Power Johnson, one of these guys who's going to go earlier than he goes in a lot of these mocks or simulations or whatever. I think if you're an interior needy team, bro, you're taking JPJ off the board and you're not thinking very much about it, which I'm not going to either. You're keeping him in his natural position, too, if you're the Seahawks, which is just money. You don't have to move him to guard. I love it right here. And, you again, we got to protect, right? It's just whatever the future of the QB is, which we probably don't even have figured out yet. At least we're going to have the O-line kind of figured out. So I'm here at 17 with two people that I really like for this team. Dallas Turner, because you don't know if the Josh Allen deal is going to get done. And Olu Fashanu to replace Cam Robinson when he's gone after this year. That would be so money. I think tackle is probably a little bit more of a need, but 
if you take Dallas Turner, you don't have to necessarily worry about paying Josh Allen a ton because you have like a guy who is kind of like a backup plan. And you know, like teams with very deep pass rush rotations always end up like being very good. And that's why I think taking a pass rusher, if you are the Bengals, is not a bad pick. And if you look, you know, they are in that 4 3 defense where. Dallas Turner can play that outside linebacker role. And I think he'd be better at that than like a straight up edge rusher, like a Jared verse. You know what I'm saying? Like who would be better in a four, three scheme. But when you look at, I also think they can go corner here. That's the other thing. But when you look at their line, they kind of have their interior, you know, kind of figured out, but they have Cam Robinson, who's under contract for 2024, and that's it. They took a rookie in Anton Harrison last year who kind of struggled a little bit, but, you know, you expect that from a rookie. He got a little bit better. I I still like the pick. I just think it's like – it's also – you know, I could also see them going with a guy like – well, actually, both the interior guys are off the board. So if you were in this position, I think with a guy like Olu on the board, it's kind of hard to pass up. So I'm going to go Olu Fashanu to the Jacksonville Jaguars. No, see, I, I love that. That was the pick I was going to say you should make. So great minds think alike on that one, bro. Has to take trenches first. Dallas Turner falling to 18 is kind of ridiculous, though. It it definitely is kind of ridiculous. And it's funny you say that, though, because it's like the Bengals just wouldn't probably be. Because I'm going to tell you right now what I was thinking. Because okay. I was thinking edge. I was thinking edge. Yeah. but I'm I don't thinking, know about Dallas Turner go, here, though. I'm thinking we're going to go Jared Verse right here. Yeah, bro. that would be. Yeah, that would I'm, be nice. Jared Verse on this, all right? We we need on this four three on this four man D line. We need us. We need us a Jared Verse. We need us a guy who can take on double teams. Who can go? You take on tight end chips. Not that Dallas Turner can't, but I feel like I'm much more comfortable year one early with Jared Verse in that rotation role, taking Sam Hubbard's spot. And yeah, it had to be edge. I was thinking Lia too, also, bro. But Jared Verse. I just we're we're gonna take the no injury history over right the banking on the. Hoping Lyons who stays healthy, just not gonna overthink it and taking Jared off the board right here at pick 18. I feel you. Um, so honestly, then I was hoping that he might fall to the Eagles, but Dallas Turner to the Los Angeles Rams is kind of nasty. Well, I had a feeling you're gonna say that. I mean, you could go corner, you could go tackle. With a guy like Dallas Turner pairing him with like a Kobe Turner, the Turners are going to be working in L.A. So I, I like that a lot for them. I love that, bro. That's just money. Oh, wait. Yeah, Kobe Turner. Oh, I'm thinking of, bro, Byron Young. Why? Wait, he was a rookie. He was one of the rookies last year, right? You know, he was uh, he was off the edge and then Kobe's on oh, the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Got it, got it, got it. All right, but yeah. Kobe is a beast. 20 to the Pittsburgh Steelers. What am I going to do here, bro? I have a lot of options. You do. But at the same time, I'm just not going to overthink it, bro. I'm, I, You know me. I'm not going to overthink it. J.C. Latham sitting right here. We desperately need to tackle. I'm super high on J.C.'s upside. I'm not overthinking it. Pair Give me J.C. Broderick right Jones, here. Two SEC guys. I would say pair with Broderick. You could do it the same way. You could literally, you could play it. You could do the same exact process you do with Broderick. I love it. I'm not going to overthink it. Jay-Z right here at pick 20. Miami Dolphins, without even thinking about it, I'm going to go Grant Barton. Someone who can play all five positions. They need help on the interior. Teron Armstead is injured often. Austin Jackson, you know, signed an extension. So it's a guy who can play at tackle on a pinch. He can play on the interior. And he's probably one of the better and safest interior O-linemen in the draft. No, absolutely, bro. I, I look absolutely. at I look at Fautanu here in terms of five position versatility for you know prospects and then i think graham barton's like kind of right below that no no i graham barton's another one of those guys where i think he'll go earlier than a lot of people think he, he'll go you know what i mean and this is yeah. that's a prime example i think graham barton's gonna go like mid early first 22 to the eagles all right bro you know i got i definitely got options here but i'm gonna say yeah like again i'm just gonna go with my gut on this one I think if you're the Eagles, we we desperately need a DB who can play all across the field. We really don't have many DBs figured out. Obviously, you're not going to play him at safety, but like you could play him anywhere in that cornerback room. I'm taking Kool-Aid off the board right here, bro. Interesting. Okay. 
Another, another like one of these guys, I think, he'll, I think he's going to go earlier than people have him listed, bro. Like, I think kool one of those guys where he's going to go earlier than a lot of people. Have, like, just, you know what I mean? Just lack of testing, all that. But kool I think, is going to go a lot earlier than people think. It's very, very possible. Um, now we're on the board with the Washington Commanders. So their roster is really weird. We talked about this. We weren't necessarily fans of their offseason. Like, as I've looked at it, like, I understand what their plan was, right? It was to, like... Fill the roster with, you know, to raise the floor of the roster, right? But in my opinion, I don't know that I love that they did it in the way they did it. Because if I'm raising the floor of my roster, I guess I'm also trying to take chances on like younger guys too. And it seems like they kind of, I mean, I don't know. They didn't sign like insanely old players. I just... Different philosophy, like I said, with the commanders. We we already went through this on our channel on the free agency video. But with the board the way it is, I think maybe a guy here at um if we look at their I think we actually I'm just blabbering. I think a tackle is probably <laughs> the easiest route to go here. And I think with a guy like a Marius Mims on the board, you have to take that chance. Well, yeah, hey, we talk about swinging for the fences, bro. This is definitely a swing for the fences money play. You get Jaden Daniels. You get a franchise tackle potentially too. So, I mean, I think if you walk out of this and you still have a second round pick, you have kind of done the best you can in the first round if you're the commanders. No, Dude, I would love this value right here for the commanders. And again, like we talk about, you got to take home run shots when you're kind of like not in good standing. It's exactly what we're doing for the commanders right here. 24 to the Dallas Cowboys. Yeehaw. Yeehaw, bro. All right, let me think what I'm going to do here. Because, again, back to the back to having options. Definitely got options with the Cowboys. They're a weird team, bro. I, I never know where to draft. Well, I know where to draft. Like, tackle, interior offensive line. They could go linebacker, but that's kind of more of a second-round pick. Their cornerback room is all right. I don't know. You know, I'm going to go with a pick where it's like, I'm just not going to overthink it again. Back to just uh, this going with my gut, not overthinking it much, bro. I think Cowboys really need a center. They turn out O lineman at a, just a legendary rate. We got Zach Frazier sitting right here on the board. Interesting. Like from the Cowboys, I'm going to say, you know what? Let me get that guy from West Virginia where the tape is just dominant. And I think that if he, Zach Frazier goes to the Cowboys, that's I just like a that pick. Money, money landing spot, bro. I could see that. I could also see them per- trading down a little bit and picking him. But I, I could, don't think I the could. value is bad for this. Yeah, it's not the best value, but it's also like just taking your guy off the board. Maybe the Bucks would be thinking the same thing. There's definitely some teams that could be thinking the same thing. So we're just taking our guy, you know what I mean, getting it out of the way. I think with the board, the way it's fallen and 25 to the Packers, I think Cooper DeGene just makes the most sense because it's like he can play safety, he can play corner, and they desperately need help in the secondary, and the value there is just too too much to pass up. No, that's fantastic. I was going to say, he, he can't fall too much farther, right? No, 26 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, bro. Bucks, another team, so many directions I could go. But then there's obviously also like the glaring need in the interior. Hmm. <laughs> Honestly, a tough spot for the Bucks right here, bro. Very tough. The way the board fell, though, you know what? Talk about teams that are going to be taking home run shots. They're kind of in that odd standing spot. Bucks probably in that same group. You know, we got Latu Latu sitting right here, bro. He's bro, one of these guys. Yeah. He can't he he can't fall much farther. I got to take Latu off the board right here. And if you're the Bucks, we're taking a home run shot right here, bro. Twenty seven to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I think they're in an interesting spot because they also have the thirty fifth pick. So, I guess it depends on what you want to do with it. You've taken Marvin Harrison Jr. And I think the value for Nate Wiggins is kind of too high to pass up at this point. I think he can, they need a corner. I think he can be a dominant corner in the league if he puts on some weight with the athleticism that he has. So I'm going to go, you're going to get maybe CB1 and wide receiver. Not not He's not CB1 in the draft, but CB1 on your team and Marvin Harrison Jr., and now you've drastically improved your secondary and your wide receiver room. You know, I love that. I, I, again, just, just got to put on some weight. I'm not as low on Nate as some people are. 
right? It's just I think that athleticism is so good that it's like. Yeah, we can't just take one draft class last year sample size of the small corners not working. Like, right, we can put on some weight with Nate and make that athletic frame work out. He's this is still a guy with great frame, great range. Don't sleep on him. 28 to the Buffalo Bills. I think this is probably a very simple pick. Yeah, you know, the way things have fallen now, it definitely is. We're taking Brian Thomas Jr. off the board right here. We're not thinking about it. We need our digs replacement, baby. 29 to the Detroit Lions. They need a corner. I hate the corners that are on the board for the first round kind of value here. Um, Wait, don't sleep on my guy, though, bro. Who? TJ Tampa or Kamari Lasser or Mike Sanchez? Saren still. still. I just think, like, okay, I I have an idea to kind of help them out here. I'm ready. Okay, what if the Cardinals call up, right? And the Cardinals say, Let's move back just to 35. We'll give you, let's see. Where are the Cardinals? Am I missing them? I just went right over them. We give them 35 and we give them 90 for 29. And then we take, ooh, hold on. We give them 66, 35, 66. They give us 29 and 73. I like it. I don't know if that's enough, though, to be honest with you. I feel like it's not. We're getting basically into the second round here. Or, I feel or, like, or what if we gave them? Maybe give them one or maybe give them 226 as well. 226. And then we give them. I just think it's like. It's kind of tough. I just think they the Lions need a little bit more value. So maybe. Because the issue is they don't have any, like, they have pick 73, and then they don't have a pick until 164. So maybe yeah, we could tough. do 35, 66, and then we give them 104. Okay. And I think that's I think that's fair. I think that should be fair. You know, I think that's fair. All right, let's force that trade through. So now right, with the Arizona Cardinals on the clock, I am going to have them taking Chop Robinson. I love that. I think I've Chop, seen this in Nate Wiggins, Marvin recently. Harrison Jr. Yeah, and don't forget about BJ Ujulari on the other side of the edge. Like, all of a sudden, where the Cardinals, like I said, it's happened in one of my the simulations I did the other day. You do got like an athletic, you know, young pass rushing duo over there now in Arizona. Don't sleep right. on that. At number 30, we have the Baltimore Ravens. Where are you going? You know, let me think about this for a sec, bro. This is definitely an interesting spot to be in. I'm always torn between tackle and wide receiver. Because that really is the struggle with these late round teams is they don't have a pick until like the end of the second. So the second round guys are getting are usually like third round guys. I'm going to give the Ravens what I don't believe they have already. I'm going to give Lamar his third and short move the chains wide receiver. Let me get Ladd McConkey right here to the Ravens, bro. Okay, okay. I like that. I think I just, it's like it's like I just want to go with like the route they don't already have. And I right. feel like, again, with Adonai, I love Adonai, but he's just not the sh- like the sure handed move the chains third down guy that Lad is as much mm-hmm. as he has other traits. You know what I mean? So I just feel like going Lad right here. I'm comfortable with it. One of the easier picks here for the 49ers, I think, is a Tyler Guyton, because the idea is he can learn behind McKivitz and Teron or uh, Trent Williams for the year because McKivitz is under contract through 2025 and his potential is very high. I also think they're because of the scheme that they run that Jordan Morgan would be a good fit for them. So I'm going to go Jordan Morgan because he can play right away. See, I I actually love that pick. That is definitely it. You, 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 you tricked me a little bit, but I love it. (laughs) Uh, 32 to the Kansas city chiefs. All right, bro. 32 to the chiefs. Uh, I want to, you know, I want to do something fun, but I've done it recently. I'm going to go with what I think the more safe selection is right here. Let me just take Adonai Mitchell off the board without, without overthinking this one too much. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I I don't know what their wide receiver room is going to look like. Um, yeah, we definitely don't the, even know what the wide receiver is going to look like. So. The Rishi Rice situation. We're now into round two. The Carolina Panthers are on the clock. 
I was kind of trying to think of what I want to do here. Um, I was looking at the roster, and there's two routes I can go here. Their wide receiver depth is horrendous. Um, and I was thinking, what if I doubled up at wide receiver? But then the more I thought about it, they do kind of need a tackle plan after Morton is gone. I know he's 29. And then you also look at like Iki Aquanu, like he kind of took a step back last year, like a pretty bad step back. Unfortunately, yeah, bro. And the Panthers need a lot to win, right? So I'm thinking oh, yeah. with a guy. Play nicely. Like, yeah, it's going to be a while. And if you can take a project like a Tyler Guyton and he is able to develop into a player that you think he can be, you may have a good tackle combo of Icky Aquanu and a Tyler Guyton. And that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take Tyler Guyton with a 33rd pick. I love it, bro. I, I mean, it, like, that's not what I thought you were going to do right here. But the way you explained it exactly, like, and if you're the Panthers, you know, you know how I, you know how I feel all the time. Well, Trace the other thing is, bro, you got to build the trenches up. So they can take a wide receiver at 39. That's what oh, I was thinking. Absolutely. And this thing is, they don't have to double up. I think you got a lot of good depth in this entire class throughout, like, you can in the third and fourth round. So it's right, like, you right. Don't double up. 35 to the New England Patriots. All right. Let me just think about this one for a sec, bro. We took JJ McCarthy at number three. Yeah, it's like when you put it like that, I feel like we got to go receiver right here. And you know my guy right here, bro. I'm going to take him a little earlier than he's projected. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Let's get r- slick Rick down here in New England. Bet on you. I just, it. just I, I like Ricky Pearsall, and I don't think I don't think 34 is too high for him. I just think it's funny of him in like a New England Patriots uniform. See, it is, but that's why I love it because it's just so it's so it's so out of the cards. You know what? I had to pull it off. At number 35 to the Detroit Lions. I think they got to go corner here. I think this puts them in a little bit of a better range for the corners available. Um, you know, Mikey is there, 5'10, 182. TJ Tampa's there, 6'2", 200. I, I like Kamari Lasseter as well, six foot 180. I kind of like the size of Tampa. I really like Tampa. So I think I'm going to no, go... he's definitely the lanky guy. I'm going to go TJ Tampa to the Detroit Lions at 35. All right, see, I love that, though. It kind of just, it's kind of a... Whoever the Lions feel like is highest on their board, but I do think they're going to go DB here at some point early. Now the Chargers have two picks in a row in the second round, number 36 and 37. They took Rome Odunze with pick 11. So now they can address probably, I don't know what they're going to address here, Dobbs. Kind of put us in an interesting position. They did. And you know what? You know what we're going to address first? We're going to take one of these guys off the board that could just be like, again, where, you know, especially post combine, like one of these guys that could just have an enormously high ceiling. We're the Chargers. We're, we're competing for championships. And then we're in, we're in one of those situations, like we say, where we still got to take home run shots. Like we got a good team. We got the quarterback. We got to get those home run players. Let's just hope for the Chargers that Braden Fisk is one of those home run players because we're taking him off the board right here at pick 36. Okay, defensive interior. Now 37. We're right back on the board now. So... We went defensive interior. We went with wide receiver. Yeah, I was say wide receiver. I was blanking. I think with the way the wide receiver room looks, it's Joshua Palmer, Simi Fahoko, Romo Dunze, Quinton Johnson, and Darius Davis. Not very good. Yeah, tough. So you could look at the wide receiver room. They could use a guy like Troy Franklin. Definitely could. They could use a rye like Roman Wilson. I know what you're thinking here, though. Or you could go Mikey Sanders still. You know, oh, see, see I was, what I was thinking you about. You were I love thinking Keon Coleman, weren't you? No, no. See, I was thinking Xavier Worthy. Ooh. Hold on. You just snapped. You just snapped. See, that's what I was thinking. Oh, bro. What? I just... I just think they – I don't know if they would invest two picks this early in wide receiver. I think they want to see what Quentin Johnston does. I think Josh Palmer can be wide receiver three. 
No, I'm with you on that a thousand percent though. In terms of like value, I just it definitely is not the best. I value. really do like that though with Herbert's arm. It's it's home run value. They do need corner badly though. No, so bad though, bro. I was that's the thing is I went Braden on the assumption that we were gonna well, go corner hold on. eventually. They do have two third round picks. They could probably get another receiver there. So that their corners, they have Kristen, Christian Fulton, Asante Samuel Jr., and that's about it. So maybe we yeah, do go well. Mikey. Maybe we do go Mikey. I mean, he's a he's a Michigan guy, and like with the way Harbaugh is, you know, he's gonna take his guys. I so. think going Mikey right here is the right route. Fuck, Worthy would have been so cool though with Herbert. Um, thirty-eight to the Tennessee Titans. All right, bro. To the Titans here. Let's see what we're going to do. I got a lot of options here, bro. Okay, before you go into the Titans, what are the chances that the Chargers drastically over draft players like the Raiders used to do when Gruden came back? What, what do you mean by that, though? Remember they took, like, Clellan, Clellan, Clellan Farrell and Alex Leatherwood? That was all under the Gruden regime, right? No, yeah, it was, bro. So I'm thinking, like, I don't know, maybe this dude comes back and just, like, takes Roman Wilson at pick fucking five. And not, he won't do that, but you know what I'm saying? Like, that is hilarious. You're saying, what, you're saying maybe we should take in Roman with the last two picks? No, no, just, like... What's the chances that the, the Chargers just overdraft guys they love? They don't give a fuck about value. I could see it, but at the same time, I feel like we've seen, like, Jim Harbaugh comes in and he builds his team. Like, I yeah, feel like yeah. the Chargers aren't going to miss too many beats. I'll tell you what, though, bro. I'm struggling with what I want to do here for the Titans. I really am struggling, bro. Uh, but you know what? We went uh, Joe Alt first. Man, it's tough, bro. But you know what? We're going to take him off the board right here. We're saying fuck the RAS score. Hashtag fuck the RAS. Fuck, no, I'm just playing. But I, jokes aside, I think we're the Titans. We desperately need a safety. We yeah. know we need a safety. Tyler Newbin sitting right here, and I feel like we're getting him at really good value. I'm going to take him off the board right here at pick 38. I like that. I mean, they did lose Kevin Byard last year to the Eagles. And, and we saw how much, when they have a dominant safety, how much that that defense right gets to move in. So. I, I do like that pick. Um, 39 to the Carolina Panthers. Ooh, but I love Jermaine Burton here. I don't think this is the right franchise for him, though. No, um, yeah, I'm saying that it, it, I love the I love it, but I don't know, man. Especially with Deontay Johnson already there, especially um, with David Tepper in the building. I don't know, like yeah. it's I, I, I like Ian Coleman too, but I feel like we kind of have have to go with Troy Franklin or Roman Wilson. I think I'm going to go Troy Franklin because I, not to say that Roman Wilson and Adam Thielen are like similar at all, but it's more like of those like possession guys, you know, that are just going to get no, you. No, no, I know exactly. What you're so saying, bro. I, I'm going to go Troy Franklin, someone who can kind of stretch the field and he's a big target. He's six, three. So no, four, I love it. 40 to the Washington commanders. All right, so we're, I'm sorry, just be sure we're going. You said we're going Troy Franklin at 39, right? Troy Franklin 39, yeah. Okay, I just, want, I just want to be sure. Okay, Troy. All right, and then yeah, I'm struggling already here at pick 40. No, I'm, I'm cheating ahead a little bit, bro. Remind me, what was what was the picks we went earlier? For we the went Jaden Daniels and Amarius Mims. Okay, this is a this is an interesting pick for them. Man, is it ever, bro? Oh man, um. And see, it sucks for me even more because they play a 4-3. As much as I would love to just take Chris Braswell off the board right here. Yeah. Just don't think he fits into the scheme well at all. Ah, man, bro. You know what, bro? I'm going hashtag fuck the Rass back to back. Can you believe it? No, oh, no way. No way. No way. Uh, yeah, no, bro. We're doing it. I'm taking Ennis Rakestraw off the board right here to the, oh, to the okay. commanders, bro. You scared me. I don't know. So I, 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 yeah, I know. I'm going Ennis Rakestraw. I think we, you know, we're the commanders. We really need a corner. I, again, like I said, I love Ennis. So I, I'm going to say hashtag fuck the rass on back to back picks. You scared me. I thought you were going to go kitchens. So that's who you thought. I'll oh, see. That, <laughs> that, that would be a little early still. I feel like we're still a little I was early. Like, for I was like, yeah, fuck the rass, but oh. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that would just be a little a little off the wall. Um, all right, 41 to the Green Bay Packers. Uh, we went Cooper to Gene earlier. They do need O line. Um, they do have another pick later this round where I think they could probably go O line, and they do need defensive interior. And I do like the idea of adding a guy like a Darius Robinson, someone who can play on the interior, someone who can play on the edge, um, gives them some versatility. And I think he is someone that could even be a late first round pick if a team likes him enough. No, bro. I, he, he definitely can. He's one of the, he's one of these money picks. You know, how I feel about Darius Robinson at pick 42 for the Houston Texans. I'm struggling, bro. Like I really am. I'm really struggling, bro, because it's like I really do want to go Peyton Wilson right here. But I just feel like for a team like the Texans, where you're on such an upward trajectory, I don't know if you're going to want to bank one of your early picks on a guy who has injury concerns. Well, we also like know that, that they don't need a wide receiver, which is nice. Yeah, but you know what? That's kind of my thing. Is You know what, bro? You know what? Like we said, when you're in a position where you kind of ha- are in home run territory, the Texans, I think, are also prime candidates where it's like, they're close to being Super Bowl contenders, but you just maybe need a couple more home run guys. If Peyton Wilson stays healthy and he can take that Blake Cashman spot that you just lost, I mean, we're gonna, I was very surprised to let go of Blake Cashman. Very surprised they didn't get a deal done with Blake Cashman. I think you're getting a really good replacement, though, right here with Peyton Wilson with a guy with upside to play that same role at that same level that Cashman was. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to overthink it, bro. I'm going to take Peyton Wilson on this hopes that he stays healthy. Okay. At number 43, we have the Atlanta Falcons. We had them taking Jerzon Newton earlier. Um, So, looking at the board here, they do need D-line still. Um, And I'm looking at their depth chart. I do still think they may need wide receiver, but I don't really love my options right here. I think Jermaine Burton wouldn't be a bad choice there. I don't know... Like I said, I feel like Jermaine Burton has to go to like a very, very like stable organization and with a new kind. I don't know if you want like, I don't know. I don't know if I'd go with him here. Um, You know, like I said, wide receiver could be improved. They do need help on the edge. Um, And I was looking at defensive interior, but with the way um that he's kind of gone already, I don't know. I mean. Is Jonah Ellis someone you take at 43? I think it's a, just a little bit early for him. Um, Adisa Isaac. I don't know, Dobbs. This is a tough pick. See, I'll tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. What I'm thinking right here is if I was the Falcons, I'm going to snap my fingers and hand that card in right away. I'm taking Kamari Lasseter off so, the board. Okay, the Georgian, was, right? We got the Georgia boy. I was just I, that's about I was to thinking. say that because... They have, um, you know, AJ Terrell. They have Clark Phillips. But after that, I mean, it's like Richie Grant and Mike Hughes. Not bad, but with the value that you're going to get with Kamari Lasseter, someone who is a very physical corner, I like him a lot, um, I think could be very good for the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, so that was that was my next pick. I'm glad you said that because I was just unsure because I've taken Kamari Lasseter for um, – or I've taken a corner. I can't remember. I think I took a corner for the Falcons and, like, I know the room isn't horrible, but that's one of those premium positions where you have to be pretty good and deep at. Because if one guy goes down, you're getting torched. I was just about to say, no, bro, if AJ Terrell's out, you need someone else in that room. I think you're getting definitely fantastic value right here with Kamari. Is that who we're locking in? Yeah, I I locked it in. Um, 44 to the Las Vegas Raiders. We had them taking Terrion Arnold in the first round. All right. I'll tell you what, bro. I'll tell you what. Um... It's it's very interesting because it's between two guys, obviously. Right. But I feel like, right, I don't know. The way that the Raiders were built right now, the offense that they run, I don't know. I feel like I feel like we're gonna take Penix over Knicks. I feel you. I just I I don't know. We're gonna take the yeah, the deep the the bigger arm. We're gonna, you know, we still got Devontae on the roster. We got to make some fireworks happen. I think we're gonna go Penix right here. If you didn't take Penix there. I was going to take him at the Giants pick at 47. You see, I well, we know. I guess I think, and, and with Bo Nix, Bo's going to be coming off the board here sooner than later, definitely. But it's just, I just don't know where. I'm, I'm, I don't I'm know trying where. to think of spots. The Saints. No, I don't know. Uh, we had the Saints going with Byron Murphy. Um, so they still need do need D-line help. They need offensive line help as well. Um 
you know, maybe Kingsley Suomatia. I don't, or, or do you look at a guy like a Keon Coleman to pair with Chris Olave and you have a little bit of a different vibe? I don't know. I, I don't feel like yeah, I my, don't forget the thing is just don't forget about Rashid Shahid. And, and and everyone forgets Perry, about Rashid. Yeah. yeah. You you guys like, yeah, like, honestly, I'll tell you as a Saints fan, I'm not worried about the receiving room. But like okay, the receiving okay, room okay. to me is actually just fine. Yeah, I mean, definitely O line and D line is a little bit more of a need. Um so right much more, here. I'll tell you, as a Saints fan. I don't know why they have the receiver listed before that, because we are desperate in those trenches, bro. I think it may just go uh Yeah, I wonder how they I wonder I've wonder how it's like listed because it's definitely not alphabetical. Um, so I'm just looking at O line and D line here. There are I some think... sneaky guys right here for the Saints. So we took who you took Byron Murphy, so an interior guy. I mean, I don't like Chris Braswell in this defense. Um, I think yeah, me neither. To be honest, this... I I think maybe a Kingsley Suomatia to play tackle, but it's like. Uh, it's another project. It's kind of the, like, I think that's kind of the pick I love right here, though, to be really? honest. Like, that's that okay. Could, that would be, that probably would be the pick I love right here. Either him or, to be honest with you, bro, if they just doubled up on interior and took Ruka Hora Hora also, I wouldn't be upset with that either. I think let's, let's swing on a different position. Let's get, let's go Kingsley Suamatia or Suamatia. Um, just because, see, I love that though. It's just like, it's kind of like you're just playing musical chairs with tackle, though. It's like, ah, uh, you were just hoping these guys work out. OP sticks. Yeah, I'm I'm for it though. We just we we need our trenches back together. I don't care how it gets done. All right, 46 to the Indianapolis Colts. All right, bro. Oh man. I tell you right now for sure, if I didn't just take Peyton Wilson off the board, this would have been where he would have gone. Quinion Mitchell's uh already a Colt. So we went corner. Okay. We went corner. You know what? I think we're going to sure up that receiving room. Um, I, Again, I, if you know how I feel about the Colts, I know, and it's no disrespect or anything, you know, I'm never trying to be disrespectful. I just don't think Alec Pierce is working out the way you want Whoa. him to work out. There's <laughs> such a good pick right here, and I hope you do it. So, okay, I, I'm because this is what I'm thinking. Right, because it's, yeah, he's not, he hasn't worked out from the perspective of it just hasn't gone the way you want. But there's a guy on the board right here who would fill that same exact role. And I think me and I are thinking the same thing because you just would draft another guy to come play literally the exact same role with a very similar frame, which is the whole reason they drafted out Pierce in the first place. Let me take Keon Coleman off the board right here to the Colts to pair up with Anthony Richardson. Okay. I like that. I had a different guy in mind. I was thinking, thinking Xavier worthy with his arm. See, okay. And that's, that would be tons of my only logic on why I didn't do that. Why that I just went with the other option though, is because I feel like you already have your small, like burner yeah, with yeah. Josh Downs I know, and Josh I Downs know. has already proved that he's a productive receiver. So it's like, I don't, you know, we, we just don't need two of them. I feel like it's like, now we have two really big possession receivers and we also have Josh Downs are like slot burner. All right. So with the giants here, um, they took Talisa Fuaga. They do need wide receiver, but I don't necessarily love the guys that we have here. Um, and if we're looking at the defense, they do need some corner help. I don't love our. I don't love the board for the Giants right now. I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. I bro, the way the Giants were built, I don't love the board for them anywhere that they're drafting. Like they're just like they, they are in just a tough, terrible position. Unfortunately, like like this whole draft. Whenever I whenever I'm with them, like yeah. I mean, do do they look at Bo Nix? I don't I know. Would if say I, this, bro. I don't I'm gonna, love like, that though. But dude, I think the one. Here's my thing though. And again, the more and more that I watch Oregon through this process, Oregon's offense. But number one, I fall in love more and more with Bucky Irving every day. Like Bucky Irving, I say fuck the combine. Like dude, Bucky Irving, fucking pro running back, Bucky Irving. I I love Bucky Irving so much. But that's not a side. That's just a side note. With Bo Nix, he has he has so many traits that you want. He just doesn't have the deep ball. It's like but that's the thing too. Is it's like. You can't really coach the deep ball. Like, it's like, that's just kind of something you can't really coach. I don't know, man. It's tough because he has so many traits that you love and you fall in love with when you're scouting quarterbacks. But then on the other hand, he literally is missing the most crucial one, the ability yeah. to get it down the field when in the cold weather. And I when think that's what Dable wants. Dable it's, wants it's, Yeah, it's ball. tough. It's really tough, bro. It's like, it's like you kind of only, 
It my issue with going receiver though is their wide receiver room is already fucking so muddy. Like, bro, Darius Slayton, Wandale Robinson, Jalen Hyatt, then you have Isaiah McKenzie, Isaiah Hodgins. Like, none of these guys are like amazing players, but it's like you throw another guy in the mix, it's just like kind of another like of the same dudes. Like, is this well, a team that takes a chance on Jermaine Burton? Let me let me offer let me offer you another like let me offer you this though as like on the other hand maybe maybe just say for right now like it's just just a suggestion but maybe it's like our offense is so fucked right now maybe we're just gonna address the defense first and address some of our more pressing needs on defense because the board also is definitely suited really well right now if you want to take one of your DBs off the board because if we're the Giants I'd say we definitely desperately still need either safety position and almost a corner anywhere across the board. Yeah, safety, you're probably going to get a little bit better value. So uh, I don't want to be the guy that keeps taking Jaden Hicks here, though. But there's like, nothing the wrong problem. with it if it's like one of your guys. And again, dude, yeah. with the Giants desperately need a true safety. I just saw I just saw something. I think he ran like a 4-4-7. So give me Jaden Hicks then. I think Jaden Hicks, I like him a lot to the Giants. I just think like with his size and speed and, and, and physicality, I think it makes a lot of sense. Dude, he's safety one to a lot of people as the process moves along here. So there's nothing wrong with taking Jaden Hicks here. You're in great value at 47. 48 to the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right, let me think about this one here for a sec, bro. Because if I'm not mistaken, so we went tackle earlier, right? Yeah, Olu Fashanu. Okay. Olu Fashanu. Man, it's tough. I would, dude, I just, I want to take Chris Braswell off the board so bad, but in every single team that I'm picking for recently, it's been a, th it's been a uh, four, three scheme instead of a three, no, four. The, the Giants are the, the Jaguars. Yeah, I see the three, Jaguars. Four. No, they actually, but the Jaguars, if I'm not, I say they actually full time. I forgot. No, the Jaguars, I'm tripping. Yeah, bro, I'm tripping. Jaguars are a three, four. So you know what? Yeah, no, I love that. I'm 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 not gonna think much about it now that I realized I was tripping. Yeah, we're taking Chris Braswell off the board right here, bro. You can play him on that edge. We can oh, rotate yeah. where Trayvon now now we get a lot of versatility. We can make Trayvon, we can play Roy Roberts and Harris at the nose and play Trayvon on that interior, you know, that with that interior exterior role. And then we can play Braswell in the on the edge where Trayvon Walker was playing. I feel like if we take if we take Chris off the board right here, we got a lot of versatility. I love Chris Braswell to the Jags right here. So we had Jared Verse come off the board for the Bengals earlier in the first round. Um, if we're looking at the wide receiver room for the Cincinnati Bengals, um, you know, they have T. Higgins, they have Trent Irwin. I think this potentially could be a team where Xavier Worthy goes. Carrying Bro. Xavier Worthy with Jamar Chase would be nuts, especially no, with T. Higgins possibly on the way out. Um, so that's do what it. I'm going to do. Xavier Worthy to the Bengals at 49. And this is something that the Bills cannot allow to happen. Because if you are already kind of the team that was struggling to get over the hump, which the Bengals, obviously, they got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chiefs, but they've done it before. They've yeah, I say they've done Bowl. it. I, I, I believe in the Bengals every year way more than I will believe in the Bills. And if this is a scenario where your conference rival, who you know that you haven't got over the hump, and they have when it's been the Chiefs as a superpower, and you allow them to get Xavier Worthy, you have failed. Yes, no, dude, let's call it for what it is. The Bengals were literally a third down conversion away from basically winning their first Super Bowl as a franchise. Meanwhile, the Bills have had a, a lead of, of three with 13 seconds left over the Chiefs and still found a way not to get over the hump. It's like no disrespect, but it's just two different boats at this point. If you're the Bills, yeah, honestly, I don't know how you make sure, but you would just make sure this doesn't happen with the Bengals right there because that would just be like the spot, one of the spots for Xavier Worthy. At number 50 to the Philadelphia Eagles. Dude, I gotta play this pick carefully, bro. I know we got a lot of Eagles subscribers. We appreciate all the support, man. I gotta, I gotta play these picks well, right for Eagles subscribers. They're already gonna kill you for the Kool Aid pick. They don't think they need a corner. But that's, you know what? I'm a, I, I, on that one. We're gonna have to just agree to disagree, Eagles fans. Yeah, I'm I, telling I disagree. You, if you, if you got Kool Aid, I'm telling you, guys, I think Kool Aid's one of those guys where it's like you're gonna fall in love with Kool Aid if he, if he's on your team. Like it's, it's literally just the lack of not seeing him out there. It's kind of like. The recency bias people develop when you haven't seen a guy in a while, but yeah. I'm telling you, man, I'm still super high in Kool Aid. But back to the back to reality here, and because we gotta make a pick right now for the Eagles. Oh man, bro, so rough. There's so many directions I could go to. I know they just had the Reed Blankenship extension. Obviously, you probably want to give Sidney Brown more time. It's like you're probably not gonna replace him just off his rookie year. Ah, uh, it's just it's tough, bro. It's really tough. I don't really know what direction I want to go. I I. 
have an idea for you if you're interested. Uh, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm always open here. Yeah. Um, Devonta Par uh, uh Devonte Parker's are wide receiver three. They have. Funny enough, they have him playing X right now, too. So he's technically even, in a sense, the wide receiver one, which is just fucked, even though he's obviously not. We know Philly is a place that can handle personalities. Jermaine Burton, Devonta Smith, and A.J. Brown. And you know what? No, dude, I'm doing it without even thinking about it. We're handing in the card off the suggestion because my logic on it is, too, bros. We saw that Jalen Hurts is at his best when he's just surrounded by weapons. Weapons everywhere, and that's fine. Now that you paid him more money, you need to be paying less to the premium positions. If we take Jermaine Burton right here, we're definitely spending a lot less money on premium positions. I love it right here. Bro. And you have another pick and two picks. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. We kind of just got to take a one of our, we talk about home run shots. Here's another one. 51 to the Steelers. We had JC Latham going first. I think, you know, I don't think there's any center prospects you want to look at right now. Uh, you do need corners. I don't love your options. I'm probably going to go with a wide receiver. And I think, I think we did this last time, but Roman Wilson and pairing pairing Roman Wilson with George Pickens, I think is such a good idea because you get just a gritty football player and he's that, you know, short possession guy as opposed to George Pickens, which you can send down the field streaking. So, and maybe even to that point, bro, to like compliment also what you're saying, I think Roman's a kind of guy where if we've seen his personality shine over the years at Michigan, He's going to be one of those guys where if, if George is tripping or you know he's having a rough day and he's gotten getting in his own head, you know, Rome would be one of the first guys over there. Hey, bro, like we right here. Like, we know yeah, we yeah. good. Like, you're fine. You're fine. I feel like it's almost like they, their personalities complement each other very yeah. well. So I, I think that's a great pick. 52 to the Rams. Oh, man, bro. Um, you had, for, dude, my hand has been forced, bro. We had Dallas Turner first. Oh, my goodness. Should I do it, bro? I don't know. Do you do it? He fell right to them. Oh, yo. It's kind of hard not to do. You it. don't need him. This thing is because you really don't need. But you have to have a succession plan, bro. They were trying to get Sam Howell. No, no, like... What I was going to say is, no, you you need a What I was going to say is you don't even really need the deep. If there's one offense that you really don't need to have a super, super elite deep ball in, it is the Sean McVay offense. Like, you know what? Yeah, bro. I'm going to say, well, you know what? This I'm just not going to overthink it. Bo Nix is your succession plan. The one, one of the two offenses... The Shanahan offense, the McVay offense, you really don't need to have the deep ball in your arsenal. Even though, obviously, Stafford does, Goff did. You really don't, we've seen, you, the the the, uh, the Rams don't really go deep very often. It's more just, it's West Coast. It's getting that thing where it needs to be accurately. It's getting it there on time. You know what? I love Bo Nix right here to the, uh, to the Rams, and I'm taking him right here. So Spencer Rattler is going to be starting for uh, the Denver Broncos this year. That's crazy. It's funny, bro, because... I think there's also a small possibility that the Rams take a quarterback in the first round. Um, and I honestly would have loved Sam Howell on the Rams. I think that would have been amazing. No, that would have been, dude, that would have been money. 53 to the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, is it even a question? Edger and Cooper is sitting right here for them. That is that that is definitely one of the easier selections of the day. Edger and Cooper, Jermaine Burton, and Cloyd McKinstry. That's a good draft. That's a fire. I'll say that's a fire first two rounds. 54 to the Cleveland Browns. Hmm. Oh, man. We talked about this earlier. I don't think he goes this high. But also would be kind of raw. What do you think here, bro? What do I want to do? The Browns kind of are in a position to just kind of make like a fuck you pick. Like they can take whoever they want. Yeah, you know what? The Browns are making the fuck you pick. They're disregarding the misdemeanor. They're oh, saying, yeah. I'm going to put you right next to Miles Garrett. You just you just go free him up. You you just take on all the bullshit and let Miles go clean up. Tavondre Sweat, welcome to the Cleveland Browns. All right. I like that a lot. We talked about it pre-show, and it just it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, how it, how, it, how, it, how it ended up benefiting the Browns. You know, sometimes you commit a crime. Somebody else benefits from it. Well, that's today. I mean, <laughs> it ended you, up being the Cleveland Browns. You think about last year when everyone was like, "Oh, I don't want to touch Dewan Jones." Does he love the game? Falls to the fourth, and he started the. He started after everyone got injured. He was good. Yeah, no, granted, Dewan on a different boat then uh, than Tavondre, but on the, the same. Yeah, yeah. On the same token, it's doubts being placed on a young man where the reality situation is we don't know everything about them, and you know, again, I'm not excusing it, but I also understand that young people generally 
make mistakes when they're in the spotlight. And the reality of the situation is we're drafting for talent over anything else. We're drafting for upside more than anything else. And we're still not questioning the talent and upside of Andre Sweat. Now we're just questioning the intangibles. But you know what? I'm placing next to Miles Garrett. You can't fuck up that much. Like I said, just just take on bodies. Let Miles do the rest. We're giving you a very, very specific role here in Cleveland. So let me ask you this. At number 55, after we've I've after- interior the offensive line. Oh, hold on. Mike did the shit again. Um, after we've it, it fixed the interior of the offensive line, kind of, for the Dolphins. At 55, would you rather have Chris Jenkins or Ben Sanat? I'm going to tell you this. As you know, as much as I love Ben Sanat, I'm very high on him. You would rather take I, Jatavian dude, Sanders? No, I, I would rather take Chris. I think you said Chris Jenkins. Well, I did. I did. But just in, in terms of like tight end, would you rather have as tight end to Ben Sanat or Jatavian Sanders? See, okay. In in the Dolphins system, I'd rather have Jatavian Sanders. Okay. Now, in a lot of power runs, like power run schemes, I'd rather have Sanat. It just, it just depends where, you know, it just kind of depends where we're going. But, you know, but to answer your question initially, for this value... Bro, I think Chris Jenkins is still a guy who genuinely has. And again, I know it comes down to it's only about length with, with Chris, you know, with Chris Jenkins at this point. Everything you read about Chris Jenkins, it's length, length, length. I think Chris Jenkins is one of these guys that can break the mold. Like, it doesn't really matter. He's such a strong, physical, dominant player that that length is I don't worry about very much. He's still a guy to me that should go earlier than this. And him falling to you at pick 55, I think you're just getting egregiously good value. 56 to the Dallas Cowboys. Where are we going? So we're taking Chris off the board at 55? Yeah, Chris. Okay. All right, Cowboys bro. These are a mess. Yeah, dude. Well, they didn't help me out with how they handled free agency. Like, they literally left so many needs for me still here. It's like, but at the same time, maybe that helps me out a little bit too. Man, bro. Uh, you know what? You know a pick I like here for the Cowboys where it's a little bit off the wall, perhaps, but I think it's one of those just very high upside picks. And more than anything, it's a little bit weird because we would kind of be moving him around to a very interesting role. But we've seen that the big slot becoming more of kind of a popular thing in today's NFL, having a really big guy to go cover the big tight ends. You know what? Let me big slot Kyrie Jackson over here to the Dallas Cowboys. Give them a third corner. We've seen that that even when they're right, like they have great DBs, but those DBs are also liable to have really rough days. I'm going to, I'm just taking kind of a swing here, but it's a swing where it could be a potential home run. Yeah. Let me big slot Kyrie Jackson right here to the Cowboys, bro. Definitely need some depth at, at cornerback. Um, 20 or 57 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We had them going lay out to lot to, um, you know, this may be a position where Sinat could be a good um, play. I also oh, think, money though, right here. I want to fix that interior a little bit. So I am actually going to go Christian Haynes here to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Probably the best interior guy that is not like a first round talent. I love it, bro. No, I, I he's one of these guys where if he if he went uh, very early second round, even late would first to a team like the Niners or something, would not be surprised at all. 58 to the Green Bay Packers. Okay, so remind me, what did what did we do with the Packers first pick we again? We went, went um, Cooper to Gene. I said, okay, and so we went, in the second round, we also took Darius Robinson. It's Cooper to Gene, Darius Robinson. So we went both um both defense. See it, yeah, see, this just puts me in another tough position, to be honest, bro. Because I would really love to take Ruko Hohoro right here, but I feel like you're going to want to give Devontae Wyatt like one more season. Mm-hmm. And then he's also not just, he's just not going to take TJ Slayton's spot because he's just not big enough. And then obviously Kenny Clark's just Kenny Clark, like Kenny Clark's spot's not being taken. Right. So it's just, it's rough. Um, we definitely still need another corner. Uh, we definitely still need interior help. Um, It's tough, bro. You know, kind of like you just did. Let me see. Let me just find my guy right here. Just like you did. I'm going to take a guy where I think he will go much earlier than he is listed. I love his tape. He dominated against a lot of really good competition this year where he was the kind of like the only guy on that line really making shit happen. I'm going to take Christian Mahogany right here, bro, from Boston College uh, guard. And I, I think, again, a guy where we're going to see him go a lot earlier than he's listed, especially on PFF. They have a 92. I definitely would have much higher than that on my board. 
yeah, I'm happy taking Christian Hockey right here off the board for the Packers. 59 to the Houston Texans. We had them taking Peyton Wilson. They need help on the defensive interior. Give me Rook a row, a row. You love that dude. He, he, he was going to go sooner or later. I was going to make sure he wasn't going to fall out of the second round. Nah, he, he, he should not fall out of the second at number. No, he's 60, one of those guys where potential home run, like athleticism. He's just really raw. Still. He needs time to kind of develop still. Um, 60 to the Buffalo Bills. We had them going with Brian Thomas Jr. in round one. Oh, man. Okay, so. Bills, Bills, Bills. I mean, okay, I, here's how I'm going to look at it. We've seen that Von Miller is not the same Von he used to be. Right. I think how, what, what, I, what I really like right here, this is my favorite, one of my actually favorite things that have fallen to us this whole mock because it's one of these really odd situations I never really envisioned. But now that it's happened, I love it. Because we got a Deesa Isaac sitting right here, an athletic, kind of more raw, young pass rusher. But then on the other, it's like, if we put him with that Von Miller experience, knowing that Von Miller is probably not going to be even taking majority snaps anymore, but he kind of just mentors Adisa Isaac. I love that role where Adisa in that same kind of mold as Von, a little undersized, but hey, we get him to learn, you know, get under those pads, get that same versatility of moveset that Von has. All of a sudden, Adisa Isaac can be a really dangerous edge rusher. I love him right here to the Bills. All righty. I like that too. I think they need defensive line help more on the edge than the uh, interior, but well, 61 for sure. to the Detroit Lions. We had them taking Mikey Sanders still. Um, how do you say his last name? I keep fucking it up. I think it's Sanders still. Okay, gotcha. But I could be totally wrong. I just I've just been reading it as I pronounce it. Like, yeah. The uh the nice thing about the uh Lions now is basically because of their trade with the Arizona Cardinals, they have the third or fourth pick or one no the second pick in the third round so they can really kind of play this board however they see fit um unfortunately for them kind of the interior o line prospects are already a little bit gone but you know what this i don't know if this is early for him i think maybe he's more of a third round guy i mean I don't know if I'm going to necessarily take him here, but Cooper BB can be your starting guard. Bro, you, dude, no, you're cooking now. Now you're cooking. He's bro, he's one of those guys where he's falling. I don't know how or why he's falling down these boards, but you know, I'm, I'm still I be think, taking him. As I, I think I it's because he's played so long in college. He's a little bit older and he's had injuries, but I just feel like for the value, I, I think you could get him. Okay, so here, here's, I just want to lay out my, my plan to the uh, viewers is actually, you know, what? I'm going to go edge here, but with the 66th pick, if we were doing a third round, I would take a Cooper BB. Okay. So basically Cooper BB to lions and we do our third round mock soon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go Jonah <laughs> Ellis on the edge to play opposite of that. Aiden Hutchinson. That, though that I Jonah Ellis is one of these sneaky prospects though, for sure. Like I could see Jonah Ellis come in, come to the right system, have a six, seven sack rookie year. And, you know, all of a sudden everyone's scratching their heads like, whoa, how'd he fall? Yeah. You know, like how did, how did, how do we let Jonah Ellis fall so far? 62 to the Baltimore Ravens. We had them taking Lad McConkey in the first. The Ravens are such a tough team to be picking for because they have so many needs shirt out, bro. Like they are, it's, it's like uh it's very, it's just a very tough position to be in almost in the, in a good way. Um, I think they do need some edge help though. I would say, I think, I think that I would love for them to get some edge depth. That's what I was thinking too, bro. Definitely need some edge depth. Oh man. Um, interesting, bro. Interesting. They do need O-line badly as well. You know, one of my guys here that I really like that I think would fit really well on this Ravens uh, defense. And I haven't picked in one of these mocks in a long time. But he would just he would fit very well. Where he's still very like raw. He definitely have a lot of development to do. But you see the ceiling with the size. He has a good bag of moves already. He just needs to be refined. I like Austin Booker right here at pick sixty two to the okay. Ravens off okay. the edge. We're gonna get and just play all right. We're depthing him that rookie year. We're definitely gonna just ease him in. 
But that ceiling, as we know, is very high. I love him right here, pick 62. 63 to the San Francisco 49ers. We had them going with Jordan Morgan in the first. Um, they do need, oh, they still do need, um, what's it called? Um, why am I fucking blanking? Uh, cornerback help? I was going to say we still need the DB. I'm thinking we maybe go Max Melton here. Dude, I would love going Max Melton right here, bro. I know it's a little bit early for him, but like if you look no, at like. No, fuck it. No, it's fuck just it. like it, it, we, the 49ers don't pick until 94. And he's going to be no, gone. Bro, we've been on that. the Max Melton train. We've been yeah. on the Max Melton train. It's only right that we just ride it out. 64 to the Kansas City Chiefs last pick of Mock Draft Madness, day 38. Wow, last pick, Mock Draft Madness, bro. Oh, shit, Sid, is the is the fucking eclipse happening right now? Oh. I don't know, is it, bro? I think the eclipse is happening right now, yeah. Probably. Yeah. So it's only right, so it's only right if the eclipse is happening. I got to make a fire pick for the Chiefs here, bro. Oh, yeah. All right, let me think. What are we going to do here, bro? Because it's like we said, it's tough because uh, it's just a tough. This is just tough. Like, to be honest, this is just, this is just a rough, like, because the value for where we're at is just weird. All right. What are we doing to end the mock? I, cause I think I, I think I really might be cooking some here. Hold on. Let me just check one thing before I lock this one in. But I do think I'm not going to lie. I'm patting myself on the back for this one a little bit in advance. All right, bro. We're the Chiefs. We're playing the long game, right? We know it's like, why wouldn't we be? We know right. we're going to be contending for a Super Bowl for the foreseeable future. There's no reason not to be playing the long game consistently. And we have Jatavion Sanders sitting right here on the board Ooh. for us. To let, you know, to kind of mold behind Travis Kelsey. That's just, you Like, like that's that. just disgustingly good value. I'm locking it in right here to close us out today, bro. Well, thank you guys so much for watching the Mock Draft Madness Day 38. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to mock draft. I think it's 17 days now. I'm very excited. Um, if you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Let me know in the comments your favorite and least favorite pick from this mock draft as well as trade scenarios. We're going to be doing a mock draft every single day until the until the NFL draft, including on the day of. Maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll wake up. If, you, if you're open, Dobbs, depending, we could just wake up or do it the night before. Do like a three-round mock and release it morning of the draft. Oh, bro, yeah, because I'll say we're going live, too. I think we can, we'll figure out the best way to do it, but no matter what, we're making sure they're getting all that content on draft day. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.